Hello everyone. Tonight on Adventures with Paul we have another update on uh, our three-dimensional printing. Um, we'll notice something different going on there. We'll get to that in a sec. Here are the six short PCB mounts that I needed to complete. I got these done Friday night. Um, it's Sunday night now, going into work tomorrow morning. I also got 24 of the little caps that go on the top of these. About half of the uh, spots for them will get populated. We have two short ones and two long ones. I'm just going to show what short ones here. And if these were the long ones, that would be the wide orientation of the card. I put a cap there, 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 and there. So six to hold the board in. And this completes the circuit board mounts that I've been working on doing. So I moved on to my VESA mount. This is the original that came from the manufacturer. You'll notice that there's an angle to the top of that. That held the computer at an angle behind the monitor and that just wasn't working out for us. Also, you can see it's rather narrow, so it wasn't providing real sturdy support. Um, this was the first shot at printing it. You can see it's fairly good top surface on there, most places at least. Um, if you look carefully, you can see a Y offset. It's a bit of an overhang on this side where it got knocked. Um, I was sitting in the machine like that and my eldest daughter noticed one of the little spring clips was crooked so she reached in to straighten it out for me. She was being helpful. The thing quickly jumped and uh, the bed moved towards her and bit her hand and a belt jumped so we wound up with a little bit of a step on both sides there. There you can see it fairly well running down the length. That messed up my hole positions there a little bit. Uh, this was done with uh, support material and I had to kind of drill that out a little bit. The hole on the left isn't very clean. The one on the right worked out fairly well. Um, I turned support material off and just let that hole bridge on the next one I did and it worked fairly well. You can see there's screws in there now. That little plastic piece there in the middle is from the factory and I stole it off of this, screws and all, and screwed it onto my new one. Now, the original one I did, there's like hemispheres and I let that print out just so I could put the plastic piece in this rectangular slot. It fits nice and snug. And I took some measurements for how high I wanted those bumpers to be. And the next one, I actually stopped the job when it was at the right height. They're just a little bit higher than the height of uh, this rectangular area. And that presses against the bottom side of the uh, computer that uh, it's mounting. That's this guy right here. It's got a slot on the back, and that goes on like that. So there's my nice sturdy mount that I've been working towards. Um, it's black on black, so it's a little rough to see. But the important thing is, it's nice and solid. It's not wobbling around at all. It's rigidly on there, so when we bolt this to the back of a monitor, it'll hold fairly well. Um, I got that process down. This was doing ABS on PET tape. And then I got real low on ABS. So I'm the uh, bottom of my spool there and I didn't think there was enough on here to do the next one so I switched over to my spool of PLA 
Uh, PLA is rather different than ABS. The temperatures we're running, I'm at 185C and an unheated bed right now going on blue painter's tape. Ran out to the local Home Depot and got myself a roll of this stuff. Now, people had been telling me that you can print PLA onto a heated glass bed if the glass is clean glass, and I tried that multiple times and it failed dismally. Um, we went with the blue painter's tape and the first one of these, I was doing test blocks again, and let's see, there's my two, the others, uh, can you see the P? There's a P on there. These are my first two test blocks. In PLA, I got all my ABS test blocks back here, but I did those, and this was the first one. You can see that corner lifted right there, top right as you're looking at it and played around a little bit, got the next one. This one I did with a, a brim of, I think, four millimeters or something like that. So like the first layer was actually larger. So if it peeled any, the brim would peel and the part wouldn't, and that worked very well. The problem, or the thing is, this is a 20 millimeter by 20 millimeter part, and that's a 165 by 165. When I went to the larger part, I started running into trouble. I found out things like my glass isn't actually as flat as I thought it was. I need to do some better measurements on that, but there seems to be a little bit of a hump in the middle of the glass, which was causing me some issues. Um, the thickness of the filament is a little different. Um, what do I got it dialed down to? I actually have the flow rate turned quite a bit down here. Yeah, I'm down to 81% on the flow to make it that clean. Oh, we're filling in the top. Um, I'm only five millimeters high for the body of the thing, and then the upright that actually holds the computer comes up quite a bit higher than that. So we're just getting, I think I got four solid layers on top here. I'm not certain that my uh, finish will be all that Clean. We'll see. I may have to up that flow rate a bit for the next one. Um, it almost seemed that 81 was still too much when I was doing the initial layers. You can see I got a. That's what the brim looks like when it's down. There's like one layer that's larger than the part, and it's set down on the tape very nicely. It's not lifting anywhere. So this stuff is not as inclined to lift, at least off of the blue tape. Um, I haven't tried removing anything. This is the first thing I've actually printed on blue tape. Um, I didn't bother doing a test block on this. Um, I have uh, various putty knives and whatnot to assist in the removal when we get that part. If I have to rip the tape off, that's not going to hurt anything. It's like I got a where to go. I got a whole spool of it or roll right there. It was eight bucks, ten bucks. I don't know. Anyhow. So that's where we stand. I'm going to go into the office with all my uh, circuit card mounts uh, tomorrow, make a bunch of people happy. Um, Post-production finishing on these, I'm cleaning those holes out with a .109 drill bit on a drill press, and then tapping them all to uh, 632. And then all of these holes we're going to clean out with a .154, which is a clearance hole on a number six. So we'll use number six screws to bolt the circuit cards to the stainless steel plate that everything's mounted on. Uh, I'm going to go in and show these off. That one, um, I'm probably going to touch the uh, support bumps there on a, a disc sander and get them sanded down to the height I want them and try installing another one of those plastic blocks from one of these mounts. On here, this one will probably be usable as well. I don't think my little Y offset is going to cause that much trouble. The worst thing that'll do is cause a difficulty in lining up those holes, and I might be able to just oblong them a little bit to make it work. But um, that's where things stand. Um, rather successful weekend, really. When I was doing those six uh, supports there, 
they went one right after the other with no failures the whole night, which was just amazing seeing the uh, difficulties I was having before that. The, um, aside from my daughter reaching in with the uh, clip adjustment there, um, the first VESA mount almost came off perfectly as well. The second one definitely came off well. Um, the only issue there was that I wasn't finished with the design, so I went in and adjusted the uh, model for this one. So when it's done, it will make those four support, their hemispheres actually sitting on top of that platform. But I've shortened them down to where they're supposed to be. So that's where it stands. More is at hand.